Hi, I'm Jeff Gonzalez, president of Trident Concepts. And today I'm here with Brian Ellis Daily Defense to talk to you about shoulder carry, shoulder carry for concealment. So in many states, shoulder carry is an option for your license to carry. Texas happens to be one of them. So it's another option that you might want to consider. While there's a lot of negative stigma associated with the shoulder carry, it is still an option that some people might choose. So let's talk about a couple of the pros and cons and some common mistakes that you want to avoid. First, one of the pros is that you're going to get a little bit more accessibility in a seated position than you would off the hip. So if I'm sitting down, it's easy for me to reach into the uh, armpit of my weak side to go ahead and grab that firearm. So I get a little bit of accessibility options that might not exist in a strong side carry. Think about being seat belted into your vehicle, you can kind of get inside of that uh, shoulder area, that armpit area to get your firearm. Next, inclement weather. And this is one of the uh, pros that I really see value. If you really have to bundle up, so you're wearing layer upon layer upon layer, really you only have to put your shoulder holster underneath the outer layer. So if you are going to wear a lot of layers, then with a shell jacket on top, you're really only having to defeat that shell layer as opposed to all the other layers that you might have to defeat from a belt side holster. The next thing we talk about is it's a convenient package. Most of the time, a shoulder holster is going to come with the holster itself plus magazine uh, pouches that you can carry spare ammunition. So that's kind of a nice grab and go format. The other nice thing about that is that it's a pretty decent weight bearing option. So if you have difficulty carrying around your waistband for whatever reason, taking the weight off of your belt and putting it over your shoulders is not a bad idea. If you are lucky to be able to see things starting to go sideways on you, you can typically start to move your hands and get them more into a more inconspicuous kind of positioning here. So I might be able to do that in anticipation of something going bad and me having to draw my firearm a little bit sooner than I might want. The other bad side to this is that if you're in close proximity, it's pretty easy to foul that draw stroke because I've got to go across my body to draw the gun and I got to move the gun across my body to present the gun. So it's kind of an easy format for some people to just kind of jam up that draw stroke. One of the other problems is that most of the time our hand positions are down low. So that means that I actually have to raise my hands up and move my hand across my center line far enough to reach that firearm. So hand position can sometimes be an issue. Regardless of what type of shoulder holster that you carry, whether it's a vertical or horizontal, the one common denominator is going to be you have to have a cover garment on at all times. So unlike a, um, a on, the way, on, on the waistband, either on the waistband, in the waistband type strong side holster, I can untuck my shirt, I can pull a shirt on and over it. But unlike that condition, I'm gonna to have to wear some type of overcoat that allows me to conceal the entire package. One last thing that you need to really consider is that if you want to try to carry in this manner, you are really reducing the opportunity to practice live fire. And this to me is one of the reasons why I probably would dissuade many people from doing it. Most ranges are not gonna allow you to work from a shoulder holster. Most schools or classes that you might attend will not allow you to work through a shoulder holster during the class. So you, re you reduce the opportunities for practice live fire greatly when you choose a shoulder holster. Now, if it's your only option, then it's your best option. And you're gonna to wanna to practice and maybe find range facilities or locations that you can still practice live fire. But if you have the opportunity to avoid it, you might wanna consider choosing something else and leaving this as an in extremist circumstance. Now the draw stroke, again, as I mentioned, you're gonna to have to reach all the way across deep into your center line, draw the pistol out, and then go straight to the target. Now when it comes time to reholster, one of the things that's gonna be required is that you're gonna to have to pull the holster forward enough to reseat that pistol back into the holster. And then the thumb brake, which is a requirement for any of those holsters, is gonna to have to be re-engaged. So it's not a fast draw stroke, and it's an even slower reholstering. Either case, practice is gonna to help to increase your performance so that you're not really worried about how fast you are as much as how consistent you can draw. All right, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them down below. Until then, I'm Jeff Gonzalez. Take care and stay safe.